Hi champs, so today I'm going to be taking you through a few property reports. The one is going to come from the NetBank banking app, the second one is going to come from the FNB slash RMB banking app, and then the third one is going to be me on Property24 just doing a, a scan of this particular complex. And I won't share my screen for the banking apps for obvious reasons, um, but I will be sharing my screen when I'm on Property24. And the reason I'm doing this is that there's a lot of property advice um, in the South African context about property, buying, renting, all of that. And this obviously doesn't constitute as advice, mainly because I'll be charging, if it was, my hourly rate. Uh, actually double, because it's a Sunday when I'm recording this. Um, but I'm not, so it's free, so it's not advice. Um, but I do want to take you through it because a lot is being shared but very little on the actual tools that people are using to come to these these types of decisions do you understand so <clears throat> i'm going to be looking at a property in cape town that i actually rented in 20 was it 2019 yes i rented there in 2019 loved my stay it was a new complex i think it was about four or five years at the time i think hopefully we'll see that in the property reports that i pulled and I'll, I'll also take you through how I went about it on the app so that when you are watching this, you can follow with me. I'll, I'll try and go a bit slow. I found the NetBank app more, <clears throat> more easier to navigate rather than the RMB app. But I think that's because I banked with uh, NetBank longer than I have with RMB, so I'm kind of used to it. Uh, but yeah, we can, we can start. I will start with the NetBank one, right? And then I'll open the report. Um, while I'm getting it so that you see what I'm going to be speaking to. So this is the final report. I'm going to log in. I'm logging into my app right now. This is the property report that comes in via email, right? <clears throat> the moment you request it. So I go in and then I go to my account. And then what I do is, oh, not my account, sorry. I go to loans. Um, and then I go to features. And there's something called home buying toolkit. That's where I've clicked. Then there's something called property report. That's where I click. And then when I enter property address, this is something that I noticed a while back and I actually mentioned it to my boyfriend. Um, so <clears throat> he's, a, he's an Android developer, so he gave me the correct term, but I forget it now. But when you click in here, when you enter the property address, sometimes the NetBank app closes before you've finished uh, putting in the full address. And it doesn't allow you to re-enter it, do you understand? Especially if it's not in the list that it's picked up. Um, so that's kind of iffy. But I'm going to enter here um, 82 June Crest. See, so it kills me before I've even said Crest. But luckily 82 SS June Crest, 14 Sunrise Boulevard, Musenberg, uh, 7945 Western Cape pulls up, right? So I click on that. I'm not going to click again, obviously. And then it puts the property address. It tells me I have two property reports remaining. So the third one for this month is the one that I requested. And then I accept the T's and C's. I submit that. And then it will ask me for my email where it wants to send the request. Right. Let me take you through the request. So it's like two minutes. And then NetBank sends it through to your email address. This is what you see, right? So this is the property report. Unit 82, 14 Sunrise Boulevard, Muhlenberg, Western Cape, just as we requested. When we scroll, uh, shows you demographic factors, sale history, property information. <laughs> okay, so street name 14, size of the what's the name? The size of the unit, so it's a 45 square meter two bedroom apartment. Uh, so this is a bit off. I don't know, this doesn't really go coincide. Um, oh, okay, I think it's just one line down. So address is that. RF is that, street number is 14, street number is that. So you kind of have to read it like that. Uh, last sale price was 950, last sale date. Uh, so that's quite nice. I like to look at that because if it was sold recently and it's already in the market, it means that there's some financial distress or the person made a bad mistake or they're just trying to get out of it. So you can sort of um, negotiate the price a bit more. And then property age, estimated property valuation. So it's six years now. So yeah, around 2019, it should have been around four years, which is nice because it's a relatively new complex. It's a sectional title, so it's an apartment. It's in Cape Town, Western Cape, municipal value 750. So what municipal means is that when the person pays rates to the city of Cape Town, they are paying based on the 750,000 valuation. So the last sale date may be linked to what the banks are valuing it at, right? 
Uh, but yeah, municipal wise, 750 is where it's at. Uh, year of the valuation is 2018. So monthly rates are 360. Those are the ones that I'm saying are based on the 750. Property usage, it's residential, right? So I'll show you the transfer history. To read this, it basically says that it's only been transferred twice. Like I said, it is quite new. So in 2015, this is the first time it was purchased. Um, it was registered in 2016, so I think it was a new development at the time. And the person bought it for 62000 and then they sold it later for 950000 So it's only had two owners, right? That's what you're seeing over there. All right, so this is where, the, <coughs> this is where we need to be mindful of what's happening. You've got a comparable analysis. So you've got max transfer in the area, 3.9 million. That's not surprising for Musenberg. It's a, it's a coastal area, um, lots of big, really nice houses. Min transfer, 750. So if you see an agent selling you like a two bed for 650, you know, it's kind of sketchy. Total transfers, comparable average sale price. So if you see something that's going above this, then you can be like, okay, there has to be something special about this one. If it's going way above that, then you can understand that, look, this, this may be a bit overpriced. So that's just a guide. All right, so 14 Sunrise. So this is the same complex. Um, this size, okay, so this is, si oh, sorry, not, not what's the name. This is uh, the registration. And then you've got uh, the rand per square meter. You want that to be as close as possible uh, to, 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 you want the one that you're offering on to be as close as possible to this. So for instance, I don't have my calculator now, and yeah, but the sale price here was 845 for 45 square meters. So if it was 1 million per square meter, we were for 45 square, um, then the rand per square meter would be higher. But if it was 1 million for, let's say, a 50 square, then that's about 20, 20, 20,000 per per square meter, right? Which is a bit, it's not too far off from the 18,000, but that's how you think about it. You say sale price divided by the size, do you understand what I mean? To get an estimate. But it's not always, like you can't really compare 45 square meter with the 60 square meter because they're different sizes. So the bigger a unit becomes, then the smaller the rand per square meter usually is, do you understand what I mean? But you can use this to definitely compare a 39 square meter, which is typically a bachelor, to a 45, do you understand? Um, so mid-size, little, and then high-end, you can, like in terms of size, you can compare the rand per square, square meter. And then the distance from the property basically tells you this is in the same complex, right? So these are units in the same complex that are selling for this. So you'll see here, this was the, in, in July, so this was the most recent, it was sold for 830. Do you understand? So if you see this is listed for 850, and then you see that in July, the last one went for, or, or, 30 then you can see that it's sort of correctly priced yeah understand what i mean um but if it goes for a million and then you can see that in july the same unit with the same size was sold for, for 830 you can still go for the viewing but it must have some kind of renovations maybe they redid the kitchen they redid the bathroom which wouldn't make sense in this instance because the youth the unit or the complex is only six years old but that's just where your mind should be at if the set if the listing price of the current property is way higher than the recent sales right um and then you'll see this is 239 meters from the so it's a neighboring complex they just don't have the address here so those are also quite important to look at let's say for example not a lot in the complex was sold so you wouldn't have enough information here you'll see that a lot of them are neighboring complexes and those are also important to look at because of a lot of the times when you're buying you're buying because right so a lot of the times you'll see that if the, these haven't been sold recently you'll pick up if these haven't been sold recently you'll pick up a lot of neighboring complexes which is also quite important to look at right that's fine and then you've got at the bottom area information so they'll show you amenities which are <coughs> services and how do i say well amenities are amenities right that are close to it so you've got engine you've got capricorn beach it's literally it is a, sto a stone throw away from capital you know, from the capricorn beach you've got hospitals that's what you want oh i was saying here with the neighboring complexes what's important is that when you're buying often you're buying for access to certain amenities, that's schools, that's hospital, etc, etc. So let's say this was a neighboring complex and there's a listing for 600,000 and this one is 860. Then you can be like, okay, I can be in the same street. My kids can go to the same schools. I can access the same hospitals and it's 260,000 rand cheaper. 
So you're definitely going to go for that one. Do you understand? So it's sort of a good uh, judge to see because all you want to do is you want to be in the same street. You don't want to be in the most expensive complex on the street. It doesn't add value unless there's like a heated pool and you understand what I mean? Go to the viewing and see why that complex is so higher priced than the, than, than, than the others. Uh, that's what doing your own research basically means. So you see Musenberg High School, you see Capricorn Park, which is a shopping center. Uh, you say Ephraim, that's a UCT uh, branch, for a research branch in the area. Right, so a lot of the times you'll see that if the, these haven't been sold recently, you'll pick up if these haven't been sold recently, you'll pick up a lot of neighboring complexes, which is also quite important to look at, right? That's fine. And then you've got at the bottom area information. So they'll show you amenities, which are <coughs> services and, how do I say, well, amenities are amenities, right, that are close to it. So you've got engine, you've got Capricorn Beach. It's literally, it is a, sto a stone's throw away from, Cap from the Capricorn Beach. You've got hospitals, that's what you want. Oh, I was saying here with the neighboring complexes, what's important is that when you're buying, often you're buying for access to certain amenities, that's schools, that's hospitals, etc., etc. So let's say this was a neighboring complex and there's a listing for 600,000 and this one is 860. Then you can be like, okay, I can be in the same street. My kids can go to the same schools. I can access the same hospitals and it's 260,000 rand cheaper. So you're definitely going to go for that one. Do you understand? So it's sort of a good uh, judge to see because all you want to do is you want to be in the same street. You don't want to be in the most expensive complex on the street. It doesn't add value unless there's like a heated pool and you understand what I mean. Go to the viewing and see why that complex is so higher priced than the, than, than, than the others. Uh, that's what doing your own research basically means. So you see Musenberg High School, you see Capricorn Park, which is a shopping center. Uh, you say Ephraim, that's a UCT uh, branch, for a research branch in the area. Okay, so um, area sales information, you've got your number of sales. I'm not really sure how to read this, um, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to buy in an area that has like a recent like spike in sales, um, but at the same time, you don't want to be first in, and this is for investment purposes. So it's quite tough, but uh, you'll see that in 2018, there was a spike in sectional schemes. Um, so as in 2016, 2016 makes sense because this is when the complex was built. So it's a whole new complex. Um, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, 2018, I don't know, maybe more or both, but you'll see that Musenberg is getting a lot of new uh, sectional schemes built and, and, and all of that, but there are quite like a few of freestanding uh, properties on the beach as well. And then you've got your median prices. So median is nice because it's not min, it's not max, it's not average, um, because average can sort of be weighed at the tails uh, by the higher priced ones as well as the lower priced ones. Um, yeah, so you look at the median price, which is basically for freestanding properties, it is about 2 million. And then for sectional schemes, you're looking at just over 1.2 1, 1, 1, 1. million, which makes sense for a beach uh, or, or coastal area, right? Especially in Cape Town. Uh, market stock, so 12.8 freestanding houses, 7% sectional schemes in the state. So that's quite nice. It means there's, like, there's not an oversupply in the area. Um, freestanding, sectional schemes, oh, 46, what are I looking at? Oh, in a state, okay, sectional schemes, this is where we would fit in, so it's about 46, which also isn't bad, it means there isn't an oversupply. And then your demographic, so main LSM, LSM 9 high, your average household income is about 44K to 57 and a half, so that just basically means the average household is earning that amount of money, and that's the LSM bracket they fall in. Um, so that just gives you guidance on the type of schools in the area um, because obviously people with within this bracket would want to send their kids to really good schools um, number of adults 6.9 I'm not sure what to make of that stat uh, but yeah LSM 9 LSM 10 is typically like your good public school and private schools in the area good public facilities so you're not public sorry good health facilities 
the police respond on time, that type of thing. So it's something to be mindful of when, you, when you're looking to buy. Period of ownership, I think that's also quite important because you want to be in an area where people actually hold on to the property and they stay. Um, so this is basically what, what that speaks to. So like a, a majority of people are staying 11 years and more. That's quite good for, for, for a property, especially if you know your exit strategy. So if your exit strategy is five to seven years, then you can look at this and be like, okay, there's a lot of people who are following that same model. At the same time, it also tells you that if you're keeping for five to seven years, there are going to be buyers, you understand what I mean, who are willing to get in for less than five years after you. Uh, so there's that. Age of your owners, not sure what to make of this. I mean, I'm 27, I'm turning 28 in about three months. So I want to be in a complex that has some old people because I like my peace, I like quiet. Um, but at the same time, I also understand that a lot of South Africans are able to afford once they reach like the 30s, 35s. So, so what you want, I think, is a good mix over here. And that is it for the Net Bank um, Home Loans Report. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you on how I went through the FNB or Net, oh, sorry, the RMB uh, app and how I got the... The report from them and then we'll go through so the report is for the same property right so as not to confuse things i just wanted to show you how or what you see and what you don't on one app so i log into my app right and then i go to navigate life right and then i go to nav home and then i go to value estimate right and then i go for a property and then western cape and then i'm going to select complex name I'm on the RMB app, it may be different than the FNB one, I'm not sure. And then when search search complex name, I'm putting in the June Crest, right? And then it comes up, it's like uh, SS June Crest, June 55 to 162. I click on that, right? And then it asks me for the unit number, I'll put in 82. It will also ask me which email address I want it sent to, I'll send that through. And then they'll drop it in my email box about two minutes later. So it's really fast, really efficient, right? And the RMB slash FNB app doesn't give you a limit on how many you can look at, as far as I know, right? Right, so now let's get into it. So property description, like we said, it's unit 82 sectional scheme, June Crest. Um, so it's in unit 82, so this is the one I picked on the app. 55 for 162 and then you actually put in the actual uh, 82 right province western cape we've seen all of this right street number 14 there's nothing new yet we have the same earth cape town it's in costa da gama it's in Wiesenberg, right we move right so last transfer date last year we saw this 950 also same thing as the net bank you don't want them to be different right you don't want them to be different Especially if the transfer date is a long time ago. If it's recent, then the one bank might not have it updated yet uh, because they get everything from the deeds office, right? But obviously, if this transfer went through FNB, then FNB would have the details maybe a bit sooner than Net Bank. But if this was happened, this happened when September last year, so both of them should have uh, it updated, you understand? Estimated value, so that's an internal FNB number. Um, I don't know, I didn't see that from the Net Bank report, but yeah. I'm not too fixated on that. I'm just interested in the last transfer price for this particular property. Then they give you a bit of a map and where it's sitting. Oh, I miss the beach. And then they we speak about property values. So all of these are in the same complex. Do you understand what I mean? The different units. And here you see the T, that means type equals transfer. If it's a V, it's a valuation, which means you can call the bank and say, hey, can you come and value my, my property? To see if it's a good time to buy or sell you're just testing the market b is a bank transfer it's when maybe the bank has repossessed the property and then sold it um so that's what you typically find here you don't want to buy into a property with a lot of b's because it means that a lot of people are struggling financially in that complex which means that the levies won't be you know the pot the levy pot won't be too full you understand what I mean? And this also just touches on the LSM that we spoke about from the Net Bank report. So that's just something that you want to be mindful of. So transfers and valuations are great because valuations typically means you chat, you're dealing with investors who are maybe wanting to move from rental to maybe selling or selling out of the investment or people who are looking to move on. So valuation and transfer, that's what you want to look at here. 
So you want to look at size. Um, the bed is wrong here. It's not filled in. So the 45 square meters are one bed. The 36 square meters are bachelors, which are one uh, zero beds. Um, so this should be filled in and it's not. Um, okay, so what you're basically seeing here is that there was a transfer in 2020 for 750,000 and that was a bachelor. Then you see 2021, let's see, was the in 2022? We're not picking up on any. So there's 2021 December 695, that was also a bachelor. Do you understand what I mean? So here you can also work out the square footage per, per, per meter, right? You can take the value and you can divide it by the size. So 695 divided by 36 or 900 divided by 45, right? So that was the March one. So in March, June Chris sold uh, one bed for 900K and then this one was sold in November for 950, also a 45 square meter. So the price is quite close, but if you see someone listing for 1.2 million, then it's going to be like, where are you getting your numbers? So it's very important to look this up. Go to the viewing, come back, and then this is you running your numbers. At least that's how I think about it, right? Because I go to the viewing and I'm like, okay, do I actually want to go further with this? Do I actually want to spend my time on this? If I don't, then it's fine. But if I do, then I need to understand where is the agent getting their numbers? Do you understand what I mean? So if you recently sold, let's say they sold three, uh, what's the name, 45 square meter one beds, and all of them were sold for this 950, 825, 900. And then there's a two bed, 45 square meter being sold in the same complex for 1.5 million. I'm going to be like, and I've seen the complex, right? And I've seen the unit, I've gone to the viewing. And then I look at it and I'm like, there's nothing special there. You understand what I mean? Um, so it's something to be considerate about. That's what running your numbers and doing your own research looks like. Price graph, again, this is internal. Um, F and B numbers, so transfer valuation, F and B housing price index, current estimated value. So, oh, because of COVID, I typically just look from the 2020 onwards, hey? Let me make this a bit smaller so we can be on the same page. Excuse the pun. I, like, since 2020, I just look at here. I'm not, like, I don't care where the what's name is sitting, where the units were sold that before that. Because 2020 changed the game in terms of in terms of property and it changed the game in terms of the, 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 the interest rate situation here in South Africa. Do you understand what I mean? So if the houses were priced at one million before and now they're selling for eight fifty, eight fifty is what I'm keeping at. So you can't come and tell me that your offer is one million because you got, the last one was sold for for eight last one when. Yeah, so, so that's very important. Like you'll see here the housing index from F and B says nine hundred and eighty, but uh, the current estimated value is sitting at just over eight fifty. So that's just something to be mindful of. That's something to be very mindful of. And then we scroll down and then property characteristics. Okay, so these aren't filled in properly. As you can see, they don't have bedrooms, they don't have bathrooms, but I know the complex, it has bedrooms, it has bathrooms. So that's something to be mindful of. Construction standard buildings, not filled in. Fittings and features, also not filled in. Um, okay, full title properties, two bed, three. You understand what I mean? So that's just a breakdown of um, the, the, the area, same thing we saw on the net bank one, but we're interested in the sectional title. So number of bedroom, two bed, unit size, uh, stand size, construction information, area characteristics. That's also something we're, we're careful of. So these are the year of construction. So you'll see the complex doesn't show up even though it was constructed in 2018 or 2016. So I'm not sure why that isn't showing up. Then you've got the national price realism, average time on the market, 11.1 .1 weeks. That's about three months, three and a half months. Sellers who had to drop the asking price, 87. Uh, average drop in asking price. I was actually telling my friend about this, right? 9%. But like, if a, per, if, a, if a unit is listed for 1 million and you see that typically 87% of sellers drop their price by 10% or 9%, you don't go and offer 900,000. No. You start at maybe 800,000. That's a 20% discount. And then you meet each other halfway with the mindset that this guy or this girl who's selling is going to settle at least on 10%. Like you must assume that they've done their research. Now you have to do your own research. Now if I come to you and I'm like, no, let's start at 900,000. You understand what I mean? Um, you, you, you're going to say, ah, let's start maybe 950K and then you settle there. But if you start at 800 and the person has 900 in their mind, then you guys can sort of meet each other halfway. So that's quite important to know this number and see where things are at. And it's called the realism, what, uh, what's the name, realism index, because a lot of people judge prices based on what's on property 24, and that's far from real. That's the selling price. It's not like pick and pay. At pick and pay, 
If they say something is 50 rand, it's 50 rand. But the housing market is completely different. If they say it's 50 rand, you don't have to take out 50 rand. You can start at 35, 40 and work your way up. Um, so this just puts that in your mind. And then that's it. So you see I pulled it this morning at 12.54 before I started this, this video. Um, so yeah, so the last one I'm going to show is I'm going to show us this one. Um, where I'm going to go on property 24. So I've signed out so you don't see my email address for safety. And I'm going to look at Musenberg two bids. Uh, let's see. What I actually want is the sold prices. And I want to show you this actual complex. Let me say low to high. And what do I want? I want the two bed for this complex. I want to show you the complex that we've just checked out. So this is actually one of them. This is it. I think this is, yeah. It says 43 though. Let's see this one as well. Right. So this is too big. Let me see if it's Kim Crest. No, it's not Kim Crest. Let me see this one. Yes. So this is Kim Crest. This is what the complex looks like. This is the kitchen. This is the kitchen. Um, lounge. These are the two bedrooms. So it's quite spacious as you can see. We've got beautiful views of the mountain. This is the bathroom. It only comes to the bath typically, but some people have done the overhead shower as well. It's two bed, one bath. This is what it looks like. It has built in cupboards and this is basically it. Close to Museum Beach, like I said. Really beautiful. Okay, so that was just some context. But what we're interested in, uh, oh, I've dealt with this agent before. What we're actually interested in is the sold prices, right? Well, look, we want to see sold prices in Musenberg because this is the third uh, research thing that I'm doing. So I'll go to, let's see, it's in Sunrise Boulevard. Yes, Sunrise Boulevard. Right, see, so you have to play around with also the <laughs> the street because some property reports, if it's on the corner, it'll have it one street and not the other. So you just have to Google Maps and then try different things. So you see here, it has the actual sectional title of housing flats. There it is, so I'm going to click on that. Right, and then it just shows you the transfer prices for each. Uh, it's, what sucks is that you can't... What's the name? Because obviously I'd want to see the latest. I'd want to click on here and I'd want it to order by or sort by. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at 82. Let's see. So 82, 950, 2021. So I'm not going to buy the report. Um, but if you were to want to, so you'll see the amount is the same as what we saw on the FNB report as well as on the Medbank report. You can buy it for 87 rand if you invested. And then like if you're really interested, last sold price 950, last sold gate 2021, like we knew. And that's basically it. Um, like I said, property insights, net bank report, free, you get three a month. Property report, RMB slash FNB banking app, also free, unlimited as far as I know. Um, and the net bank one, I mentioned that bit of trouble when you're entering the address. Um, but yeah, that's basically the type of research I do when I'm looking into a property. Please drop any questions you have in the chat, share, like, and yeah. Let's, let's get into these decisions a bit more informed. Thank you for joining, everyone.